Having trouble playing defense in college football 25? Oh my god! Well, you can't stop the run. Or can't stop the pass. This is the video for you. So if you want to see 20 tips, tricks, and cheats for better defense in college football 25, stick around after the intro. If you guys are looking for fast, cheap, reliable coins for your college football 25 team, check out my coin sponsors at MMOXP and use discount code MONEYSHOT for 5% off your order. Link in the description below. The champ is here! Welcome back, Money Team. In today's video, I'm going to give you guys several tips, tricks, and cheats that you should be using on defense every single game, starting with something that you can do in your settings tab. But before I do, if you guys want to see more videos like this, please make sure to be a subscriber. Hit the like button. Let me know in the comment section I put out videos like this very regularly. And if you want more help or more money plays, you can download any of my eBooks instantly simply by clicking links in the description or the top end comment. Now, I'm going to start off with simple functions in the game that you can change, starting off with something you can change in your gameplay settings. If you're having trouble tackling, come down to the bottom here where you see that they have a section called gameplay helpers if you haven't been in this section since you purchased the game defensive heat seeker assist is most likely off and if you read what it says that it does it says user control defenders are steered towards the ball carrier when attempting to run or dive into them so if you're having trouble tackling it may be as simple as just turning this on but you also have the option to increase the defensive heat seeker window size which is set by default to 100 percent a lot of people think that's as high as it can possibly go since 100 percent is as high as a percentage you can have but you actually have the ability to turn this all the way up to 200%. What this function does is it actually increases the magnetism between your defensive player and the ball carrier, especially when trying to perform a tackle function, which brings me to my next tip. There are three different types of tackles in this game. A dive tackle, which is kind of worthless. A hit stick, which is the right stick up or down. And then you also have a breakdown tackle by tapping the A or the X button, whether on Xbox or PlayStation. If you use this function in combination with the Heat Seeker assist window size being up to 200%, you'll notice that a lot of times this will suction you into tackles, even when you take a poor angle like I did there. If you want to increase the magnetism that you get from using this function, you just have to spam the A or X button for this function to work even better. So if you spam the A or X button when close to the ball carrier a lot of times it will auto correct and pull you into the ball carrier that much easier to make the tackle but it also has the added benefit of helping you with the tackle battles as every single time a tackle battle pops up it's always going to be the a or x button whether an xbox or playstation making it that much easier to win the tackle battle when it happens this also works when trying to get interceptions as spamming the y or triangle button will have the exact same effect often auto correcting you towards the ball as it has that same suction effect only this time towards the ball rather than towards the tackle so if you want to get more interceptions if the ball is thrown your direction immediately start spamming the wire triangle button and this will pull you towards the ball every single time the next function i'm going to show you is another function that most people doesn't know exists but it's probably the most helpful if you're new to playing football games or you just haven't played a football game in a very long time and that's the defensive assist button which you can see here is the left bumper or l1 whether an xbox or playstation so if you're not sure what to do once a play starts all you have to do is hit the lb or the l1 button and it will auto play for you until you take over as all I did throughout that entire play was hold the L1 or the RB button, you can see that we're going to automatically do what the computer would do in this situation. Doing this can be somewhat hit or miss, as you're relying on things like the computer's awareness and play recognition to kick in to make the right decisions. So on this play here, I'm using the middle linebacker shown here, but you can see on this play, as I hold the L1 or the LB button, as we have a run play to the left, and he never picks up on it, basically taking himself out of the play and going to the right. This is probably most useful in situations where your defender doesn't have to make a decision, like if you're covering the running back out of the backfield or you're on a blitz as this will take away any decision you have to make. All you have to do is hold the L1 or the LB button and he'll cover that automatically. But you could also see this is not as good as simply doing it yourself. So while this can be good training wheels, this is not something you're gonna to wanna to rely on. As being far away from the running back, you'll notice that on the next play, he won't even cover the running back and he'll go turn and cover somebody else. Next up, I'm gonna go over a very important coaching adjustment you should change, especially if you're playing against somebody who likes to run a lot of read options or RPO plays. And that's gonna be your option defense pitch key. As you're gonna to wanna to set this to conservative, even though it doesn't look like that's the way to set it. As setting a conservative says that it will focus on the QB on the option, instead of focusing on the pitch but it's actually the exact opposite if you do what this says instead to aggressive where it says focus on the pitch it will focus on the quarterback and if you said to conservative instead where it says it will focus on the quarterback it will actually focus on the pitch as you can see here we have it set to conservative and we're going to have a speed option play and you can see that he focuses on the pitch instead of the quarterback one of the most important things you can do before play starts is have your user in the right position as where you have your linebacker or your user safety on the field can really have a huge advantage whether you're playing an opponent who's running or passing. 
if they're passing and you're sending any type of blitz, you always want to make sure that you have your user hovering the line where you have this green check mark above your head and that blue pass rush bar. What this means is that the offensive line is targeting me. And since I'm closer to the ball or closer to the quarterback, once the play starts, than these outside edge rushers, a lot of times that means that they'll get in free because I'll get targeted first. And then I'll still have the ability to drop back after the snap as there are a lot of times will allow a free rusher like it did there. As you'll see in this replay, I'm sending six and they're blocking six with the running back being the sixth blocker. But you'll see that when I drop away, all five of these linemen suction in, meaning that 65 and 77 are double teaming a defensive tackle and these edges are coming in free. The running back will pick up one of the edges, but the other lineman won't be able to rotate over quick enough to let, pick up the other defensive end, meaning I get a free rusher, even though I sent the exact same amount of blitzers as the offense had pass blockers. On run plays though, this will have the exact opposite effect as being too close will get me picked up and make it harder to make a play. So if I expect my opponent to run, it's gonna be the exact opposite is I'm gonna wanna start the play about eight to 10 yards behind the line of scrimmage. As now I'm way too far back for the lineman to target me. They'll definitely target the other linebacker first because he's closer. And now once the play starts, I can just shoot this gap and basically make a play every single time. And you can see this time I'm not targeted at all as 77 and 60 double team 60 two at the nose allowing me to basically run free as nobody picks me up and we get another very easy tackle next up if you're tired of accidentally switch sticking and giving up easy touchdowns because you don't know where you are in the coverage there's a trick to that as well as all you have to do is put your user on a blitz and this changes what the right stick does now instead of switch sticking you're going to do things like spin moves or what would be a spin move if you were engaged in a block so if you want to stay on the middle linebacker, just put them on a blitz. And now you don't have the ability to switch stick. As you can see right here, I'm hitting the right stick in multiple directions and it doesn't take me anywhere. Now, just because the switch stick isn't working, it doesn't mean that I can't change players as I can still change players by holding the B button and then hitting up on the right stick. And you can see, I still went back to the safety on that play. The B button also changes which player you're controlling pre-snap. So if you're not using this next trick, you'll notice that it takes a long time to get around all these players when you can just hold the B button in instead and then use a directional stick to go wherever you want, as this is the exact same function you're using post-snap. So if you're not using this, you're obviously not gonna be making adjustments as fast. So make sure that you hold the B button and use a directional stick on which player you wanna control and it's much quicker than cycling through the entire field. Next up, if you want a clue on what your opponent's gonna do on offense, whether they're running or passing, just look at the quarterback's cadence. Anytime the quarterback is under center, if they wanna communicate with the running back, they will tap their shoulders like this. This is the universal sign that they're communicating with the running back, whether they're flipping a play or putting the running back on a pass block or a route, they will always tap their shoulders. If they want to change a player, put one of their receivers or tight ends on a hot route, they will turn their head to the line of scrimmage and call in the direction of the receiver that they're putting on a hot route. When not under center, whether in shotgun or pistol, if they want to communicate with the running back once again, they will this time tap their hip. And since you can't flip a run play from shotgun, anytime you see them tap their hip, you know they're either putting the running back on a route or a pass block. The same rule applies when calling a hot route or changing play as the quarterback will look to the sideline or call in the direction of the receiver that he's changing the route of. So if you see your opponent doing multiple calls like this, you know that they're most likely going to pass. Next up, I'm gonna go over the best type of defenses to use when it comes to run plays, starting off with cover zero. The best run defense in this entire game is without a doubt gonna be the run commit, which is gonna be the RB or the R1 button and then down the right stick. You can do this from any defense, but some defenses have a bigger penalty than others. As you'll notice from zone here, if I run commit up the middle and it's a pass play, every zone defender will crash down, completely taking themselves out of the play and allowing every receiver to get open. The biggest penalty to be had will be the safeties, as they're typically far away from the play to the point where their play recognition doesn't kick in right away. So you can see here, this safety drops all the way down to the box. And if the computer wanted to throw it to this tight end or just lobbed it up, that tight end's in a dead sprint. So he probably could have ran right right past me for the easy score. As you can see, the cornerbacks on the outside are having the same problem. But this penalty is as biggest when it comes to zone defenders as typically man defenders and blitzers won't have this problem. So if I'm in a cover one where you only have two zones on the field and I select run up the middle again, you can watch the three rack hook and the deep zone as they will both shoot in to play the run because once again, zones have a much bigger issue before they get back into coverage. Now, if we go into the replay, you can see these guys clearly bit on their assignment. They take themselves out of the play as they're now not really helping out or covering anybody. As you can see the middle high safety here, if he didn't have a man defender, would have let this guy go straight past them. But all the man defenders are not having that problem. As you can see here, both receivers go right into their pass coverage with no hesitation and take away their respective assignments. So with that in mind, if we switch over to the SS linebacker blitz, which is a man zero blitz, 
Now, since we only have pass rushers and men defenders on the field, nobody's going to bite on that play action, and we'll basically get the best of both worlds. So if we guess run up the middle, you'll see how none of the man defenders will blow their assignments. As we still get relative perfect coverage across the board as this safety drops down on the tight end and makes a play. But you'll also notice a huge difference against an actual run play. If I run commit again, the safeties will drop down this time. As you can see, the safety makes the play at the line of scrimmage. So we saw how when we ran commit, we had no penalty to the actual pass play. But now you can see it goes into a dead sprint right after the running back when run committing from the same man zero. So basically, anytime you think your opponent's going to run, just switch to a Manzer Blitz and guess run up the middle. Now, I'm not really sure if Manzer Blitz is intended to act that way when it comes to run defense, so it might get nerfed or patched. But if it does get changed, the best defense used against the run is always going to be cover four quarters. So any cover four defense, because these safeties will play the run first as long as you don't guess pass. So soon the next play, as I bring them down to the line of scrimmage, their play recognition will pick up a lot faster. And when the ball is run, they'll basically play the running back before they drop back into pass coverage. And that's because cover four is the only defense where both of the safeties have designed run fits, which means that they're part of the run defense before the play even starts. As you can see right here, they walk down forward into the box and go right after the running back because that's their assignment. This changes, however, if you guess pass, as now both of these safeties will walk backwards no matter where they are in the field, and that's because that's what I told them to do. And now you can see, even though it is a run play, they drop back because that's what I told them to do before their play recognition kicks in and they eventually chase the running back down. Cover 4 is best when it comes to inside runs since the safeties drop down to play the run, but the cornerbacks drop back, making them not too effective when it comes to outside runs. So the best outside run defense is definitely going to be Cover 2. As Cover 2 is the only play where the cornerbacks are in run fits. So you'll see in this play here, if I move this cornerback inside since I know that I picked an outside run, he's going to do a much better job of at least turning the running back back inside towards the other defenders if he doesn't make the play by himself. Typically, even in this defense, cornerbacks are pretty weak against the pass but since I moved him inside so much, the receiver can't block him, and he goes right around to pick up the running back, or like I said, the very least, a lot of times he'll just turn the running back or try to turn the running back inside towards your other defenders. So cover four is the best run defense for inside runs, cover two is the best defense for outside runs, but what about RPO plays? Matching cover four is typically going to be one of the best to use against RPO plays as well, but it's not going to be the cover four quarters, it's instead going to be the cover four palms. Cover four quarters and cover four palms do look the exact same as they both are matching cover four style defenses, but they act differently when it comes to RPOs. On this play here, if you watch the quarter flat defender, he's not necessarily always going to go after the bubble screen. If he's not too close, like say I move him a little bit closer inside the line here, he's going to react to the run play. This is always comes down to play recognition. You can see right there, he cuts inside, letting the RPO screen get outside. Now, if I leave him out there since he's split out wide and he's closer to that receiver, he will cover it. As you can see here on the next play, his play recognition kicks in, telling him it's a pass play. So it really comes down to how close you are to that receiver. But you also have the option that if he's not close enough for the play recognition to kick in, to just guess pass. And this is going to tell him to go after that receiver regardless. He's not going to play the run at all. He's now going to play that regardless of how close he is and how good his play recognition is. So while guessing pass is a good tip when it comes to covering RPO plays, as it will tell them to cover the pass play itself, we just went over how it makes run defense weaker. So while guessing pass tells that quarter flat to go after that route, it also tells these safety to drop back. So if he hands it off, the run defense just got worse. Which is why I'm telling you instead of using cover four quarters, you should use cover four palms. As now, it doesn't really matter what his play recognition is, as he's not going off of that. And that's because cover four palms is designed where this quarter flat will always play that bubble screen. So if I take him as far away as I can as possible, he's still going to drop down that route the best he can, even though he's super far away, and make a play. So what really makes this the best RPO defense is the fact that 56 is always going to play the receiver, and the safety is still going to walk down because I didn't have to guess pass. Meaning that I still have my run fit from the safeties, and I get the pass coverage every single time from the quarter flat. So I'm going to end the video there. If you guys want to see more about the cover three defense that I showed you guys at the end of the video, I'll have that popping up on screen as well as some other tip videos. So just click the links. And until next time, thanks for watching, man. My shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my bids and more. Link in the description below.